This chip right here, AMD's CEO Lisa Su is so proudly presenting, might look like any other ordinary laptop processor, but it contains new bleeding edge technology that has the potential to fundamentally change the performance and capabilities of future laptops and personal computers. Of course, I'm talking about the inclusion of the Ryzen AI branded artificial intelligence engine in AMD's new APUs, the first of its kind on a x86 processor. If you're now asking yourself what an AI engine even is, how it works and what it can be used for, I've got you covered. In this video, we will take a look at AI engines in general explore the new Ryzen AI hardware and discover why AI technology will be in almost every computer chip in just a few years time. Most people think of artificial intelligence as these super complex systems. And while the neural networks and deep learning algorithms are highly complex, the calculations to run them are not. On the contrary, AI computations don't need to be high precision and mostly consist of simple multiply accumulate calculations, something every CPU is capable of. Think of your CPU cores as Michelin star chefs. They are able to cook you everything you want from the simplest to the most complex dish. They are true general purpose. But all artificial intelligence wants is a sandwich, lots of sandwiches. And while your Michelin star CPU chefs can make you sandwiches, it's not really efficient. They sit in their huge kitchens and the output will be very limited. Running AI computations on a CPU is possible, but a waste of silicon space, energy and results in very low performance. A CPU is basically overqualified for AI tasks. GPUs are already much better equipped to handle AI workloads. To stick with my super clever cooking analogy, think of CPUs as line cooks. They don't have the same capabilities as a Michelin star chef, but can still output a range of different dishes, including sandwiches. And since a GPU has a lot of line cooks, aka cores, many thousands of them, the sandwich output will be much higher. That's the reason why GPUs have been at the forefront of AI acceleration over the past years. But GPUs also have a lot of graphic focus capabilities and these are all wasted when you use it to accelerate artificial intelligence algorithms. That's where the AI engine comes in. In its simplest form, a AI engine is just a fixed function processor that excels at low precision multiply accumulate operations. It doesn't need the versatility of a CPU or even a GPU. It is much more limited in scope, basically a sandwich factory. It won't prepare you any other food and it's not even the best sandwich you can get, but it can produce a lot of them. Because as we all know, AI is very hungry. Due to the specific focus of AI engines, AI cores are smaller than CPUs and GPU cores, which means they use up a lot less silicon space and at the same time, they perform AI operation with vastly increased energy efficiency. It's similar to other fixed function parts of a CPU or GPU. For example, a video decoder. Your CPU can decode a 4K YouTube video, but will use a lot of power doing so and you won't be able to use your CPU for anything else at the same time. A small accelerator plays your video while using a fraction of the power and freeing up your CPU. AI accelerators are doing the same for AI supported tasks. AI engines are often advertised with insane numbers of throughput. For example, Apple is claiming up to 15.8 trillion operations per second for the neural processing unit on the M2. But as you know now, these numbers only reflect the very simple nature of these calculations. It's basically 15.8 trillion multiply accumulate operations. Anything more complex straight up doesn't work. So in essence, while the name AI engine may sound like a super complex system, in reality, it's the opposite. It's a very specialized fixed function processor that is good at running very simple calculations, but lots of them at the same time. There are many AI engines already on the market and they usually come with their own marketing name. Apple calls it neural processing unit. There's the term machine learning accelerator. There are tensor cores, matrix accelerators, and so on. And while each implementation has its own differences, in essence, all of these systems are designed for rapid, low precision, parallel calculations. With Ryzen AI, AMD is introducing a seemingly new artificial intelligence architecture, but a close inspection reveals the obvious origins of this design. AMD is starting to implement technology inherited from the Xilinx acquisition. For GPUs and highly parallel designs, AMD currently uses three different main architectures. First, there is RDNA, which stands for Radeon DNA. It's AMD's gaming-focused GPU architecture. Next, there is cDNA, which is short for Compute DNA. 
That's the HPC and data center focused GPU architecture. And the new addition to the bunch is XDNA, which stands for Xilinx DNA, referring to architectures previously developed by Xilinx. Xilinx, acquired by AMD in early 2022, specializes in programmable logic devices and is credited with the invention of the field programmable gate array, or FPGA for short. Xilinx has specialized AI engines in this portfolio, which AMD is now beginning to implement into its CPU and APU lineup, starting with Phoenix. We have already talked about, in simplified terms, how AI engines work, and the approach from Xilinx, or rather now AMD's XDNA architecture, isn't any different. It's a grid of very specialized vector processes, optimized for deep neural networks, machine learning, and digital signal processing. Xilinx offers two slightly different versions of their AI cores, with one being a general AI hardware that supports all kinds of different AI applications, equally split between AI vector and AI digital signal processing, and a more pure AI machine learning core with more pronounced AI vector extensions and reduced DSP performance. I'm pretty sure AMD is using the general AI core for their XDNA architecture and not the machine learning focused one, since digital signal processing is a major selling point for laptops. At this point, I think it's critical to understand how important the implementation of AI engines really is for AMD. Up until now, the main selling point for a CPU or APU are the CPU and GPU architecture. If you are buying a laptop APU, you are most interested in what kind of CPU and GPU power it brings to the table. But in the future, you might be looking at a third kind of architecture, specifically what kind of AI cores your APU or CPU comes with. AMD is prominently showing the XDNA architecture as a major selling point in their marketing material for Phoenix, underlining the importance of the AI engine for AMD. And if you don't trust in marketing, which you shouldn't, Maybe this die shot of Phoenix is able to convince you. The area to the right is the CPU with up to 8 Zen 4 cores with 60 megabytes of L3 cache in between. Top middle to left are the RDNA 3 based GPU cores and bottom left is the new XDNA AI engine. As you can see, that's already a pretty large part of Phoenix, not close to the size of the CPU yet, but already a strong competition for the GPU. AMD is betting big on AI and their commitment in silicon clearly underlines that position. It isn't just a new extension to allow the CPU or GPU to work better with AI operations. It's an entirely self-contained artificial intelligence engine taking up a substantial part of the Phoenix IPU. And this is just the first version. Upcoming generations will most likely increase the amount of transistor and space used for the AI engine as AI workloads increase in scale. At its core, the Ryzen AI engine on Phoenix has four dedicated AI streams with over 12 trillion operations per second. This is less than the 15.8 trillion of Apple's M2. Still, AMD claims Phoenix is ahead of M2 in AI performance. We have to wait for independent benchmarks to see the true performance of Ryzen AI on Phoenix. But one thing is clear. AMD's commitment to push AI into their x86 CPUs and APUs is strong. Phoenix is just the beginning. You are now probably asking why it took so long for dedicated AI hardware to arrive in x86 products. After all, it has been as stable in many ARM-based designs. That's a great question and I think I know the answer to it. It has to do with the interconnection of hardware and software and it plays into the current AI-based applications. Apple, for example, introduced their first neural processing unit back in 2017 with the A11 Bionic. That was over five years ago since then we have seen AI engines in lots of different mobile processors. Google's latest self-designed Tensor chips are named accordingly. But mobile systems, and especially Apple, come with a very distinct advantage. Control over both hardware and software. When Apple designed the A11 Bionic for the iPhone, Apple already had a plan which software features would take advantage of the new AI capabilities. Apple knew exactly what kind of hardware and AI performance was needed to run the intended applications on it. AMD, on the other hand, only produces the hardware and has very little to no control over the software that's being run on their chips. It could be Windows or Linux in dozens of different configurations. And not only that, AMD doesn't even know what kind of supporting hardware will be installed. Is there even a webcam and microphone available? If AMD is putting an AI engine into their products without proper software support, especially from Microsoft, it's basically net hardware and AMD would rather save the wasted silicon space. That's also the reason why AMD invited so many software partners at this year's CES keynote and especially Microsoft had a long and prominent appearance. Because without the right software, Ryzen AI is useless. I've been talking about AI hardware for long enough 
Let's talk about current and possible future applications that are using AI. If we consider current gen applications, a lot of it is focused on digital signal processing. Everything that has to do with video and audio. Apple Center Stage, for example, which follows your movements and includes other people stepping into the video, is using AI acceleration. The same is true for real-time adjustment of color balance and brightness. These things are all possible on a normal CPU, but run much faster and more efficient on an AI engine. Other applications are background blurring, even if you don't have an expensive DSLR camera, or replacing the background entirely without using a green screen. Then there is audio work, things like cleaning up your voice and removing unwanted sound. Think RTX voice. Apple also uses AI for Face ID. It can be used for offline dictation and translation. These are also some of the examples AMD showed in their CES presentation. This is all software Microsoft has to provide and I guess at some point this year, support for these features will roll out on Phoenix systems that run Windows 11. With an on-chip AI accelerator, all of these AI-based workloads not only run much faster, but they also free up your CPU and GPU and consume way less power doing so. The result is longer battery life and more compute power. But while these use cases might seem a little bit disappointing compared to what most of us imagine when we think about artificial intelligence, the future could be a lot more interesting regarded AI-supported applications. And it doesn't even have to be ChatGPT running live on your laptop. Think photo and video editing with AI support. It already exists, but with an AI engine, it's much faster and more profound. Imagine live translation during video calls. Imagine games using AI engines once they are widespread enough and AI enemies learning your personal gameplay patterns in order to become tougher opponents. NPCs could finally become realistic conversation partners. AI-based chatbots, not unlike ChatGPT, could be implemented into Microsoft Word to help you write, and virtual assistants could become much more useful to the point it feels like having an actual assistant. There is an infinite amount of possibilities once the hardware is available and the software support is ready. While AMD has won the race this time and offers the first x86 processor with a dedicated AI engine, the competition isn't far behind. Intel's next-gen Meteor Lake CPUs are rumored to include dedicated AI hardware and while it will most likely be limited to mobile chips at first, I am sure it's only a matter of time when the first AI engines will be part of desktop CPUs too. Zen 5 could be the first fully AI-enabled lineup. I think AI is here to stay and will only become more important over time. With Ryzen AI on AMD's new Phoenix Point APUs, the first step has been made. Software will follow and in a few years, AI engines will be as important as CPU or GPU cores. Now I would like to hear what you think. Do you think Phoenix is the beginning of an AI avalanche or maybe you think AI is more of a hype? And are you more likely to buy Phoenix-based systems because of its dedicated AI engine? What AI-based applications would you like to see in the future? Leave a comment down below, I'm always looking forward to your input. I hope you found this video interesting and see you in the next one.